this week on Kentucky Field. You get a line, I'll get a pole. Oh heck, you don't even really need a pole. A limb will work. We're catching a ton of catfish out of the Salt River. Double limb shaker, there you go. That's a good way to start. Next, deer are everywhere, and some of the best bow hunting spots are often overlooked. So all my favorite places to hunt, my favorite places are on very, very small pieces of property in urban areas. Then, wait until you see the wildlife artwork this man can create from just a piece of wood. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plumb loaded with frogs. They're everywhere in here. Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Here it goes! Boom! Oh. 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 Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. There are many ways to catch a fish. One of the most fun and the most productive doesn't even involve a fishing pole. It's called limb lining. Tell you what, there's absolutely nothing that reminds me of my childhood more than what we're about ready to do. Oh, the good old days. So this this tree here is plumb full of bluegill, and if we can get some bluegill about that long, then that's what we've always had the most luck with yeah. as far as setting limb lines and bank poles. So pull it up. Here we go. What we got there? Suckers. Suckers and a shiner. There's a lot of little bluegill right here. All right. All right. Look at there. That's what we're looking for. The one thing that you gotta remember is this is a arm of the Salt River. So if we happen to accidentally pick up an invasive species, we're gonna be fishing in the river that's only about another 600 yards away. We're not transporting invasive species. Let me make a circle around us here. Now bring it up. There we go. There we go. Don't take many passes like that and we're in business. We're making sure that we're just getting bluegill, chubs, and suckers, and we're we're calling through to get rid of the bass and the what red ear, Chad? Red ear. You know, it is conceivable to accidentally get a crappie, so we got to make sure that any game fish, any fish that there's a limit on in the state of Kentucky, as far as catching, you don't want to have any of that. I prefer bluegill. We got some ch uh, chubs and shiners, but I think it's get it done. What do you think? Yep. Let's get it loaded up. I do have a little aerator. We'll try to keep this as lively as we possibly can. So let's get this up to the truck and uh, make our way to our put-in point. What do you think? Let's do it. Hey, just like old days. Hey, we're here. My back ain't like it was when, mm, I, was a, no. when I was a young man <laughs> 30 years ago. Some of my familiar waters here on the Salt River. Unfortunately, there's no close bank access. This is the area where we usually catch our fish, but this is how you gotta put a boat in. This is all a river cane. We just smash it down and back it on in. Getting it out, if it's wet, can be tricky. Come on back. Swimming. You always 
say some things don't always go as planned. <laughs> Normally we just unhook it and manhandle it over the hill, but that's when we were in a boat that wasn't much bigger than a bathtub. Now, 16 foot with a 25 on the back, it got away from me. <laughs> This cane pole, believe it or not, is the exact same cane pose that we used to put out 20 years ago. And they're still pretty good. You'll notice that every one of them's tied off, double tied like this. This is done because sometimes when these things start getting a little older, they will break. We drilled a hole and affixed this onto the secondary point. So we'll put a bait on there, get that thing right down to the water, and then we'll pick up slack to get the bait where it's just barely hanging out. So Jared, run that there in that root wad as good as you can. Bingo, there you go. And adjust that bad boy to where he's up here talking to him. Enough to keep him alive, about like that right there. That's a hog collar <laughs> right there. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. You're allowed 25 limb or bank post sets per person. You gotta have something permanently affixed. It's got your name and address and it has to be checked every 24 hours. We're gonna do it quite more frequently than that. Every trip to the river is always an adventure, isn't it? <laughs> always. Nothing ever goes exactly as you planned. Sometimes it's better, but it's always an adventure. We had a little issue putting this boat in today. We went to put it in the water and, you know, there's, there's no boat ramps in this area. The boat got away from us. It's a little bigger boat than we used to run in. But hey, that's part of the adventure, isn't it? <laughs> I enjoyed watching it. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Man, these catfish in this heat, they feed at night. So it's the reason we get out here and we try to do this. It was 95 degrees today, so it's a little hot to be out here in the middle of the day. So we'll get this set up, go get us a tent site. We may run them here in the middle of the night, and we'll definitely be here first thing in the morning. So I'll tell you what, a lot of memories have been made down here. There's four or five of us that used to do this every weekend night that the river would allow us. You even wrote a song. It meant that much to us. Yeah. I bet you still don't know that song, do you? I might be able to remember a little bit of it. So, um, Let's hear it. All right, we'll try. Are you gonna help me sing it? If I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wind is blowing in my mind. I'm going to a place far from here. Back to the old Salt River where I spent my younger years With a catfish on a stringer and a There you go. Oh, wow. Got us a channel cat right off the bat. Our little cane held on. Now that is about perfect eating size right there. Fiddler magic. Now the limb shaker. Limb shaker, baby. All right. We got a limb shaker. <laughs> Looky there. there you go. Get the grease hot. <laughs> Look at that. Hooked by a whisker. Literally. When it comes to checking your lines, the shaking limbs are hard to beat for excitement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. What do we got this time? Another channel. To my younger days. Got some bobbing going on here. No 20 year old cane pole is holding in there. There you go. What do you think, my friend? Limb shaker, boys. Uh oh, we got limb a limb shaker. shaker. Chad, I don't know, in all honesty, if we've ever caught this many fish on the first run. Hey, does this bring back some crazy memories? Seriously, I know we keep saying it, but the fact is, this is what it's all about. That's our littlest one of the night. Oh, fish on. Fish, fish on there. The old canes are breaking, but they're holding. River keep on flowing. Whoa, he's came alive. Slapped it for us. There we go, limb shaker, limb boys. Shaker. There we go. That's, that's a that's big a fish. fish right there now. I don't know how that had to be to not get excited when I see that. Yeah, can we go back? 
to my younger days. If this morning is anything at all like last night, well, we're in for a good morning. It's pretty exciting. So last night we put out 50 poles. Every single piece of bait was missing. I don't know how many we got. What's your best guess? I'd say we've got about 20 so far, about at least. 20. We're so excited we didn't get any sleep. Sun's coming up, the birds are chirping. I'm ready to get after them. Let's go see what we can't catch. We got a big limb shaking. I got a limb right here shaking. Double limb shaker. Double limb shaker. There you go. That's a good way to start. Our average size has been a little small, but perfect eating size. If you're doing this to go out and try to catch the biggest catfish of all time, limb line's probably not the way to go. That's gonna be a quicker pass today too, since we're not rebaiting. We're gonna go ahead and, and cut and pull all of our lines. Hopefully they'll have catfish on them like that. I see another limb shaking from here. Yep. So what's this, our fourth one this morning already? Third, fourth? Yep. Got us a little flathead. And this is a, a really small flathead. Now these are great eating. Man, they get really, really big. It's a long-lived fish. We got a cooler full, so I, what do you think? Let him loose. We'll let that joker go. 20 years from now, you may come back and catch that joker. They there live that long. Might be a little more exciting next time. There you go. So we're on the Salt River. Obviously, this is where we was raised. A lot of people don't realize the population of catfish in this river. They know that Taylor's the lake's plumb full of catfish. This is the river that feeds it, and we're on the bottom side of the lake. You can catch blues, flatheads, and channel cats. And it's uh, loaded. And it's plumb full loaded. Loaded with catfish. Catfish, Kentucky bass, smallmouth, crappie. Yep. When the sauger make the run, when the whites make the run. Chad, we need to do this more often. We worked our butts off getting bait, haven't slept in 24 hours, and I'm not even that tired right now. Yep. And we've got a double right here. We got one on the limb and one on the log. When we first started doing this, we were probably 14, 15, 16, we got a car. We're looking in somewhere in the neighborhood of scary to say 28 years and look how much life has changed for this river ain't it's the same this is exactly exactly as I remember an old muddy salt river banks are always slick the catfish are always biting for an old muddy river not too shabby it's kind of nice to get back to things that don't change you know it's the perfect getaway every now and then didn't you have to leave our home county <laughs> and we got a meal <laughs> Pretty awesome. Not every one of your deer hunting locations has to look like this. In many zone one counties with heavy population, some of your best locations may be less than 10 acres. Of all my favorite places to hunt, my favorite places are on very, very small pieces of property in urban areas. Got a couple deer with a bow so far this year, but I would love to help this guy out. He is having trouble raising a garden, and that's how many deer tend to come through here. So I hope to slip in there and maybe get one or two deer out of here for him today. These are always interesting hunts. They're very loud. We'll hear trains, buses, lawn mowers, dogs barking. It's all part of an urban hunt. You gotta just get in, block that out, and understand that it happens every day and these deer are somewhat used to it. So, I'm gonna get in here and see how it goes. Look 
got about an hour left of daylight. So far, nothing's came through, but it's been really, really distracted afternoon. We've had dogs barking. We've had people mowing grass over here. We've had homeowners out walking around. That's part of it. These deer are somewhat used to that. If you're on an urban area like this, it can happen any point in time. So you just gotta disregard all that and stay in there, stay quiet, and make sure your wind's in your favor. You never know when it may happen. Got a deer right here across the creek. Looks like a doe. Looks like she's coming out here in this field. Here she is right here. Wow, what a nice looking doe. I'm so excited to have this deer. <laughs> we had everything happen that night. We had people cutting the grass. We had people walking. We had the landowner come out to his dogs and she paid no attention whatsoever. It's quite obvious. This is one of the deer that have been coming through here walking right past the dog pen right into the garden. Hopefully he'll get a little more food for his table. I'm gonna get a little bit for my table. It's a win-win. Don't pass those opportunities on these small tracts of property in the urban areas that have a lot of deer. This deer probably ran 60 yards, maybe 70 yards. So I had no concern with retrieving the deer. I'm still on the property that I had permission to hunt. Everything's good. Time to get this deer out of here. Kentucky is blessed with many great artists. Whether they use a paintbrush, a banjo or a bandsaw. I've been told that this is the place to come for wildlife viewing. Is that true? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told by a good friend of mine that you're involved in woodworking and uh, you like to do woodworking pieces with fish and wildlife. True. Your fascination with wildlife, uh, have you been an outdoors person all your life? Yep. Yeah. Used to bow hunt for deer all the time. Yeah. And groundhogs. Yeah. Don't shoot groundhogs. And I'm assuming you like to fish. Oh yeah. I see that smallmouth. You must have witnessed a few smallmouth bass in your day to realize this thing looks spot on. So quite, quite a few of them in Green River. Yeah. Show me an example of, what, of some of this different stuff we've got here. So this is obviously a white-tailed deer. This is called segmentation, and it's all cut out in little, little bitty pieces. You raise and lower the pieces to get depth in it, and then whenever you get back away from it, it's like an oil painting or something. It all blends in together. You can see the depth right here where you got the two legs right. and the roundness. You get that roundness on yeah. it. That's really cool. So this is segmentation. That's segmentation. All right, and then you've got another style here. What kind of artwork is this? Now this is uh, intarsia. Intarsia, okay. And I try to put all the details I can in, in, in any, any of my stuff. I cut all the hair in and everything on, on all of it. Mm. The last thing I ever do to a deer or anything I do is got eyes. Mm. I do their eyes last. Mm. That uh, puts life in them. They come to life when you put eyes on them. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> the one that really caught my attention was this smallmouth. Tell me what this is. This is fretwork, and you you put your pattern on, and you drill holes for all these places that's cut out. You go to the saw, and you saw all of those pieces out. Well, I tell you what, I, I'm very interested in seeing how you do this. I'd love to see you go through this process.
All right, so show me how you're gonna do now, this. What man. I do is I take and put tape on them like this. And that's just regular masking tape, huh? Regular masking tape. Then I take this here, I use 3M77, and I spray the pattern on the back. And then I position them on the thing like I want it. Wow. And then I drill holes in this, in each one of these places, I drill holes. So every spot that you're gonna remove. It's got a hole in it. You gotta have a hole in it. Yep. Now, I like doing this is uh, this is a dying art. Oh, yeah. Now you, you get a computer and you punch in something, the machine cuts it out. Yeah. That's not that's not woodwork. Yeah, no. So you went through and put dozens of holes, and this is not even, not even finished. This probably have about 100 holes in it when you're all finished, right? Yeah. And the reason you put these holes in here is that you have to have a way to get a saw blade in, right? Right. This is a scroll saw. A scroll saw. Look how little that blade is. You said you even used smaller ones than that? Oh, yeah. Put the blade through, push it in there, and tighten it up down here. It's ready to go, huh? Ready to go. Right out of there, didn't it? Yep. So yep. that and that's how well, the process works. You keep going until you uh, until you've got them all removed. Got them all out. There's no burning. There's no nothing. No. It's just all sawing out. It's all and then sawed. you've come through here and you've you've made this a uh, a little darker color and you've lightened this up and the fish is actually a different color too, right? Yep. Well, I appreciate you letting us come in here and slowing you down a little bit today. I can tell that <laughs> you probably you probably had two or three of these done, but I, I tell you, it uh, it really is cool how you get the depth when you kind of move this thing and how you can see how, how deep these cuts that you put in. Well, if you look at that, well. you instantly know it's a smallmouth. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I don't care if you've not caught many fish in your life, you can see that and go, that's a smallmouth. That is really, really cool. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have two-year-old Madeline Butler who caught her very first fish while fishing with her Uncle John at Kentucky Lake. Nice job. Here's a moment that Aiden Harden will never forget. It's a picture of him with his first squirrel shot with a 22 rifle. Nice job. Here's a really nice buck that was taken in LaRue County by Matt King during the modern firearm season. Nice buck. Check out this nice catfish caught by Elizabeth Wilson at Meldall Dam. Nice job. Here we have Bentley Wilkerson who went fishing with his papaw and caught this nice bluegill in Zonton, Kentucky. Nice job. Here we have a nice buck that was taken with a muzzle loader by Johnny Martin in Casey County. Congratulations. Brent Wells and Philip Williamson know how to catch summertime crappie. They caught these fish as well as many others at Cave Run Lake. Nice job. Here we have Hannah Haichu with her very first largemouth bass. It was caught in a farm pond in Owen County. Nice job. Here we have Clay Rowe showing us a bass that he caught. He said it was one of many while fishing on Stoner Creek. Nice job. Check out this muskie caught by Wayne Rowe on Cave Run Lake. Said this fish was caught and released alive. Nice job. Do you have a hunting or a fishing photo that you'd like to share? Well, Kentucky Field is now accepting emailed photos of the ones that didn't get away. We will no longer accept photos sent through the mail. Email your photo to us at kyfield dot ones at ky.gov. Time is winding down to register for Kentucky's quota hunts. To find out more, you can log on to fw.ky.gov. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. 
always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.